everyone, this is Andy from MedSchool EU, and in today's video we're going to continue to talk about the cell. And in particular, we're going to start talking about cell division, and in this video we will discuss the process of mitosis and cytokinesis. Alright, so last time we left off with the G2 phase of interphase, and we're going to take a look at how we left the, the cell. So this is the G2 phase of interphase. So we haven't started mitosis yet. Th this is the last part before mitosis actually begins. So what we have here is we have the cell and we're going to be particularly looking at the uh, cell, um, the membrane here, the nuclear membrane, as well as the chromosomes and the centrosome structure, so the centrioles that are right here. So these three structures are the main components that will be involved in the process of mitosis and the underlying changes that they will, um, that will occur. So first, what we have here with the G2 phase is uh, after the replication during the S phase of interphase, each chromosome is double at all points. So as you can see, I have the chromosome and it's uh, doubled with another chromosome right beside it because it, the DNA has been replicated in the S phase and the G2 phase there it's another gap phase so there's no replication the the cell just simply prepares for uh, mitosis however the t the double chromosome structures the two sister chromatids they are still present in um, in the nucleus so what we have is uh, also the doubling of the centrioles within the centrosome. So as you can see here, now there's two of these barrel-like structures uh, that are in, uh, in the cell. So they have doubled, that happens during the G2 phase as it prepares for mitosis. And now we're gonna move along to the next stage. What happens as soon as the cell passes the G2 uh, phase and enters mitosis? So next thing that happens is we have the stage of prophase. I highlight it pro phase. And this is the first stage of mitosis. So the first notable change, as you can see from here to here, is that the chromosomes condense into threads that become visible under the light microscope. They condense into these X structures as we would normally see in a microscope. Um, th that would uh, light up a cell that's going through mitosis. So each chromosome has a, is double as a result of replication, as we mentioned previously. And the centrosome has divided into two parts, uh, which are generating the spindle as they separate. So as you can see here, the two, there's two centrosomes. Now they're separating. Now this centrosome is mi migrating to the other part, to the other side of the cell and they are forming this, this, uh, this thing called a spindle. It's called a spindle. Formation of a spindle. It's not complete here, but the beginning of the formation of the spindle, spindle starts in a prophase stage. Another not notable change is that the nucleus actually begins to disappear. So here the nucleus uh, is, is a little bit more present However, in this one, I try to draw a little bit less lines to indicate that the, nucle the nuclear um, membrane is actually disappearing and the nucleus is dissolving, so the chromosomes are just kind of floating around in, in the cytoplasm. And the reason for that is because once, the, w once this nu nuclear envelope disappears and, and the, the chromosomes are simply floating around, this disappearance reflects a shutdown of all types of RNA synthesis, including ribosomal RNA made in the nucleus. So the, R, the process of, uh, of protein synthesis is completely halted in mitosis and as soon as the prophase begins because the nucleus is dissolved. Now these structures that radiate from the centrosomes, they're microtubules. We've discussed those in, in the previous videos. Uh, because they assist in the process of cell division and mitosis. So what we have here is the formation of a mitotic spindle. So this is actually called mito mito 
spindle, and this mitotic spindle is formed by the two centrosomes migrating to opposite sides of the cell, and they are connected through a bundle of microtubules. Now the next stage in mitosis is going to be this stage right here, and we call it prometaphase. Pro meta phase. So as soon as the nuclear envelope breaks down in prophase, that marks the beginning of prometaphase. So if you're asked a question on the exam of when, what is the indication of the beginning of prometaphase if you're looking through a light microscope, the answer would be that as soon as the nuclear envelope is gone, is, has disintegrated in the cell, that is the sign of the beginning of prometaphase. Now what happens with these microtubules is that the mitotic spindle, it grows, and what they do is it, they attach to the chromosomes and they're spread all around the, the former portion of uh, the, nu the nucleus, and they, they, sp they spread around and they uh, are basically all over the cytoplasm creating a bundle of microtubules that are able to promote the process of mitosis. And particularly what these uh, microtubules actually do with the chromosomes is that, as you can see, the chromosomes have these little dots in the middle. And what these dots are, they're called um, kinetochores. So each chromosome has two kinetochores, and I, we can explain this in a better slide right here. So we have the chromosome, each chromosome, each sister chromatid has a kinetochore, and the microtubules connect to each kinetochore, pulling them apart and lining them up in the separate direction. Because as you know, obviously the cell is going to separate and is going to have an equal number of chromosomes. Now what happens and how do they separate is because the microtubules connect to these structures and uh, this one right here is going to be called kinetochore. Kinetochore. So microtubules connect to these kinetochores and they, uh, they pull them apart enforcing each sister chromatid to be on one side of the cell. Now the pulling apart does not occur in uh, prometaphase. It does not occur yet. However, what happens is the microtubules attach to the kinetochores, and that's the process that happens in prometaphase. The next stage after prometaphase is uh, going to be the stage of metaphase. So what we can label this as metaphase. And you could see some of the important things that have occurred is that the chromosomes have lined up perfectly in the middle of the cell. So the, the microtubules uh, have been pushing the chromosomes apart and what happens is they kind of get into this equilibrium stage where both uh, microtubules are pulling them apart and they basically end up lining up on the same length in the middle of the cell. And this leads us into the next process, into the next stage of mitosis, and this one is going to be called anaphase. What's most notable, as you can see, is each kinetochore is being pulled to its own pole. So this, this mitotic spindle is actually pulling the chromosomes apart, and each cystid, chromatid, is going to be pulled to its own end, the cell. Now, these, uh, the new name for these sister chromatids is going to be daughter, daughter chromosome. Because they're, they're actual chromosomes. They're no longer chromatids because they're not in this structure anymore. They're pulled apart. Now they're going to be called daughter chromosome. All right, and this leads us into the final stage of mitosis. And this one is going to be called the telophase. So let's label that telophase. Okay. So what happens in telophase is the chromosomes unfold and return to their interphase state. 
Right, so first of all, looking at the chromosomes, ignoring all the other parts, because a lot of things have transformed compared to anaphase. But what, and specifically with the chromosomes, what happened is they have uh, unfolded. So as you can see, these are the chromosomes here, the daughter chromosomes. They are, they're folded, they're compact form. However, once they're pulled to each of their spindle poles, they will be unfolded and they will return to its initial interphase state, just like they were in G2 phase. So as you can see, there are these long, long uh, chromosomes. They're kind of lined up and that's how you would see them under the light microscope as well. Another thing to know is that after the chromosomes have uh, been pushed to each pole of the of the cell a nuclear envelope is formed so the nucleus is going to be formed around the daughter nuclei and the cytoplasm is beginning to divide by furing at the points marked uh, by by these lines right here so furrowing simply means that the cytoplasm will be uh, going in and uh, collapsing on itself like this and it's, it's creating these, uh, these little gaps and it's going to basically form and split off uh, each cell and they will become the two daughter cells. Now, the, the next process, so mitosis does not include uh, the process of actually splitting off the cell. That is uh, another process that is going to be called cytokinesis and we're going to take a look at that next. So cytokinesis is going to be defined as the vision of cytoplasm, cytoplasm. So at the end of mitosis, cytokinesis is the process that occurs, dividing the cytoplasm and producing two daughter uh, cells. So there are two processes in which uh, cytokinesis occurs. The first one is going to be right here, and this one is called cytokinesis by furrowing. Furrowing. And that's typically the process of uh, when there's a furrow, a furrow like this in between the cell, right in the center, and it deepens by contraction of the microfilaments tightening around the cell. So if you were basically to take a balloon and you were put a, a, an elastic band around it and you keep putting elastic bands all around the balloon and you keep adding more and more and more pressure, eventually obviously the balloon, the balloon is going to pop. However, before it pops, it's going to create this, this uh, structure that's kind of looking like this with all these uh, strings that are right in the middle splitting the balloon in two. Now what happens with cytokinesis is that this proceeds to form two daughter cells with uh, each with its own chromosomes with daughter nuclei and chromosomes. So uh, this is the process of furrowing. However, there's another process that this the cytokinesis could occur by because furrowing typically does not occur in plant cells. It usually occurs in animal cells. Animal cells. However, in plant cells, something different occurs because plant cells are connected typically by their um, cell walls. So what we have here, and this would be uh, called cytokinesis by cell plate formation. So cell plate formation. It's cytokinesis by cell plate formation. And as you can see, this is uh, the same thing would happen in the process of mitosis for uh, the plant cell. However, what happens is that through the middle, there, there will be vesicles lined up. So these are little vesicles and they will line up right in the middle. So as you can see here, what ends up happening is that the vesicles fuse together, these little vesicles they're going to fuse together, creating just one single line. And uh, 
they're going to dump their contents into a gradually expanding wall between the daughter cells. The vesicles fuse and if this fusion continues until the daughter cells are separated by continuous new wall. So this forms new cell wall because plant cells have cell walls. So the process of cytokinesis is a little bit different between the two structures. So for today, this concludes our video on cell division through the process of mitosis. And in the next one, we're going to take a look at the process of meiosis.